from Agat, uh, Deputy Mike Barrett. In the spectator sport that, sadly, politics often descends into, instead of dealing with uh, the serious issues that affect people, the chat around the doll now is, among journalists, politicians, the crisis has receded. Kenny will survive a bit longer. Uh, because of decisions made by the Independent Alliance and Fianna Fáil, the government will hobble on uh, a bit longer. Now, those are somewhat interesting issues, but frankly, they pale into significance compared to the issues that are at the, sta at the heart of uh, this crisis, which is the utterly despicable treatment by the state of a brave man uh, who had the courage to blow the whistle on wrongdoing in the institution of the state that is supposed to ensure justice. And that that person, instead of being commended uh, and supported in his efforts to do what is right, uh, was the subject of a savage campaign of vilification, intimidation, uh, impugning of his character, uh, and an orchestrated campaign. To me, there is no doubt that there was an orchestrated campaign. That is beyond doubt. The only issue is precisely who orchestrated that campaign. That is to be decided. But that there was a campaign is not in doubt. And the Taoiseach said yesterday, this is about finding out, was there an orchestrated campaign? There was. Everybody knows it, uh, Taoiseach. Uh, and certainly there was against other whistleblowers as well, with similar uh, tactics used. The fact that another whistleblower, Garda whistleblower, Keith Harrison, also uh, had investigations about child abuse made against him at the same time that he was blowing the whistle is too much of a coincidence not to indicate a policy uh, at the highest level of the Garda Síochána of dealing with whistleblowers in this way. Shocking. And if that is the case, uh, it can only be the tip of the iceberg of an absolutely rotten culture at the heart of the state and the institution in the state that is supposed to maintain justice. And has that crisis receded? Not at all. Maybe there is light at the end of the tunnel for Maurice McCabe now. At least he, in the eyes of the public, and it's been forced on the state, is being somewhat vindicated, although it is not clear that even he will get the individual justice or the Keith Harrison will get the individual justice uh, they deserve or other whistleblowers, but it is far from certain and signs on it unlikely that the rot in the culture of institutions of the state that could have allowed this to happen is going to be dealt with by any of the major parties, either those in government or in Fianna Fáil, who are propping them up. And the proof of that is the extraordinary decision not to ask Noreen O'Sullivan to step aside. Yes, she is entitled to due process, as you have said and used as your justification for allowing her to stay in situ. Of course she is. We can't prejudge uh, the Tribunal of Inquiry, but given the seriousness, the unbelievable seriousness of the allegations, the substantial evidence that's been brought forward in this regard, the idea that she can stay in situ where, she, if she were guilty, she potentially could uh, uh, frustrate and interfere with the line of evidence that would allow the Tribunal of Inquiry to get to the truth and justice of the matter is absolutely unacceptable. So if you were committed to an actual fair, impartial uh, tribunal and investigation into this matter, you would have to, being in any way reasonable, ask her to step aside without prejudice so that that, uh, that uh, investigation uh, could proceed unobstructed, uh, with no possibility or potential for interference. Uh, and unless you do that, I don't believe that you or Fianna Fáil, who failed to call for it, are serious about dealing with the rot that produced this scandal. And I will just say in conclusion, on every other front, that the government had set out its own priorities 
to deal with the housing crisis, to deal with the health crisis, uh, you have failed. The government has failed. How on any of these key issues could we possibly vote confidence in a government that has failed on all of those fronts? Oh my God. And we now move to the impenetrable.